All right, everybody. It's the ID84 show live here in the catacombs of the Packy Studios in Revere. Episode 98, as always, the mallet. Hey, everybody. To the left of me, drinking uh, Paps Blue Paps, Ribbon. Huh? Paps nice. Change the can up a little, too. Paps Tall Boys. Can looks a little Ooh, different. Oh, it is. It's like uh, old school. Yeah, I should bring up the new ones. They have the, the Paps that are, have more alcohol in them. Paps oh, really? Extra. Yeah, Ooh. Yeah, it's black can. How much more alcohol? It's like 6.5. This is 4.9. It's like the uh, the Bud uh, Bud Light Ice or so what was it Platinum? Oh man, I don't remember know those. Of those. I don't even know. The Bud Light Platinum I had for the first time when I went to the Super Bowl. Uh, first time. Yeah. yeah, it was the big thing. Oh, everyone was drinking those. Isn't things. It like the Bud like old like Select or something like I don't know. Does Bud Select is, is, is like that still a, around? Yeah, Select is like a Bud Medium. It's like half regular Budweiser, half like Bud Light. Okay. Um, like Bud Ice. Probably. <laughs> Bud Dry. I was at uh. Bud Dry. At the liquor store today, and I walked by the Bud display. And I remember when I first turned 21, uh, 14 years ago, there was a uh, Bud E. Remember that? No, I don't remember that. It one. came in a can the size of a Red Bull can, and it was a Budweiser energy drink. Okay, I'm, I'm looking it up right now, actually. Yeah, oh, I, I remember this. Yeah, that shit I, was I fucking amazing. Really? It tastes like Red Bull beer. And it they, looks got, like it is. they got rid of it because it was just like fucking. Yeah, this was like Budweiser with the Dude, yeah. it was delicious. Did I, I, if, if anyone out there knows that they still sell this somewhere, or I can get this anywhere, I've tried to look for it for years. I can't find it anywhere. I don't think they even make it anymore. I'll even buy an old can that someone has on eBay. Oh, oh. Yeah, I mean, it, it tastes was amazing. It was like basically like Red Bull, but like with a Bud, with a beer taste. I remember a lot of those got recalled because after the full loco bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember people were dying, like college kids. And I remember you could buy them in the small cans or the big cans, and they sold them in four packs. I used to go up to Cappy's like uh, on my way home from work and stop in there, and used to down a few of those before I went out on the night. So you're trying, I never had Bud Dry. It's no, I never had Bud. I want to try. How about the uh, amber? The uh, the amber barrel select the new, the new one that's all. Have you tried that? Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about when you said that you tried the special one. Uh, no, I haven't tried that one. No, either. me neither. It's tough to get around a Budweiser price. Then I have Bud Light Orange, Bud Light uh, Lemon. You see that? Yeah, it's a lime. Lime was the old one. Do you remember yeah. the uh, the ones I brought back from Canada, the Bud Light Apple? Those yeah, were that actually was good. really good. That was really tasty. Can't actually, get those in the states. I don't know why. I don't know what. I guess it's weird how you can get some things in certain states. I guess apples are plentiful in Canada. Maybe it's easier to make. You would think it would be here. You would think uh, so, but uh, maybe it's too much competition with the ciders and stuff. Look at Tommy's just. Face there, humping. There no was one. a loan. I, I I just found this that they did try to test it in Georgia. What's that? The Bud Apple. Really? That was in 2017, though. That's when we got it. 2017. Yeah. Then it go, huh? Then nah, go I, over. I, that's all I see here. But uh, so speaking of Georgia Twix, we were down for the bachelor party. Remember the uh, harpoon? Uh, hey, 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 hey. God. The Georgia peach. Eric was drinking. Yeah. And then we seen it. I just seen it up here for the first time like a month ago. Yeah. But they had it down there, I guess. I don't know. Is that where you go test beers these days in I mean, Georgia? I remember, I remember a long time Yingling was in here. I used to go to Jersey to get it. and uh, Yeah, they didn't sell it past New York. Yeah. Uh, it was, do you know why? I forget. It was some stupid bullshit. So they reason. used to have they used it. used to have it. Yeah. yeah. And then when Sam Adams started taking over the market, they pretty much, it was pretty much the Sam Adams. It's like a Sam Adams, essentially. Sam Adams dominated the New England market, and New England decided it wasn't even worth hmm. putting their fucking... E- Energy and effort into mocking a bit. I mean, this is before. This is the. This is back in the day where people used to drink just one beer and that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember my uh, dad and uncles talking about how in the eighties it was a big deal to get Coors. Coors, yes. Because they didn't get it there. Yeah, because they they didn't brew it over here or they they made it or it came by train or something like that. And yeah, it was retarded. It was like there was a reason you couldn't get it past like like Mississippi River, and if you did, it was like <laughs> fucking gold. That is. It makes you even want you want it even more. It's like that whole supply demand thing. Exactly, you, want you can't have. That's how uh, Yingling was when I was. Uh, I used to bring back Yingling from like road trips and stuff. They see that too, yeah. And then I was like, then I, then they got it here. I ha- I think I drank it maybe a handful of times since you're gonna get it there. Yeah, it's fine. It's not it, bad. It's not bad beer at all. It's crisp. It's it, the aftertaste is fine. It's good. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'll take it over a Budweiser. To be honest, yeah. with you, you know what I mean. If it's available. It's the oldest brewery too, isn't it? Yes, yeah, American. The, the oldest uh, active uh, brewery. In the uh, country, you just want to probably there's uh, Sue. She's gonna either duck or come across the camera. Let's see if she does. Okay. Yeah, uh, Tommy was uh, humping Nola's face. The usual. Nola gave me this weird look, like she was enjoying it for a minute, then realized maybe I shouldn't be, and then she pushed Tommy over, and he fell over. Just the usual shenanigans. You know. No. They've been acting like wild animals since I got home. 
So, you know. No, they were nice this morning. Now they're just pains in the asses. But it is what it is. Um, lots have happened in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, I talked. We we talked briefly a couple of weeks ago about the uh, the fifty six hour marathon at Showcase Cinema. Yes, yes, we did. So yeah. I interviewed someone last night who <laughs> did this. Uh, I guess you could say a friend of mine. Yeah. I went to high school with named Pat. Hot, if he's watching. I know he watches the show occasionally. Now, did he stay through the entire thing? Because i got to admit, if I was going to do something like this, th- there's a few I'd probably duck out on and come back later. Yep, I yep. Mean, uh, but it, w- it was all of them? So, yeah. So, basically, he described... So, I'll give you a little background on Pat Hot. I went to high school and middle school for him. He goes to Margaritas every Wednesday, every Tuesday for Taco Day. Yeah. And uh, his record is 21 tacos. And fifteen tall boy tacates. Okay, I seen him do this in one one sitting. Oh wow! So every time I see him, I I, I encourage him to try to break his record. Okay. And to to be honest with you, uh, it's all you can eat tacos. So you pay ten dollars, and it's all the tacos you can eat after that. So for twenty one tacos for ten dollars, you got your money's worth. It's like five cents a taco. Yeah, you totally got you your know what I mean. Worth, yeah. So and then the bears are only three dollars. So his bill at the end of the night is only like thirty five bucks. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. And he, he pounds these bears, these tacos. <laughs> That's a good game planner right there. And he, gotta... that, it's a science. And I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I feel like I, I take part of this. I, I, I want to see if, what the, the record is for Guinness. And a certain, like a total sit. And I want, I want him to be in the book. And I want to be like his, uh, you know, the guy yeah. wiping the sweat off his forehead at the end of the day. Huh. So I seen on Facebook a couple of uh, weeks ago, he had posted, uh, about to start my 56-hour uh, marathon at the Showcase Cinema. Hmm. So I wanted to do this. I couldn't get the time off to do the two and a half days of the movie theater. But I was very curious about what the life... I know they were doing it on the, the local stations. They had some guy there. But they, the details were kind of vague of what was yeah. going on. So what drew you to this? You're, you're not much of a movie guy, I know. But like, I know... What, so what was it? Was just the, the length of it? The uh, I, I like a challenge. The, I, I like something like this. I've never really been into Marvel. I've seen... Um, yeah, yeah. I've seen... Is that the Hulk? Is that part of the... Yeah, it is technically. But yeah. it's not part of this marathon, right? Cause it's, it's yeah, a, the one, the more recent one? Yeah, technically is might it, be. Even though, even though uh, the guy who plays the Hulk now wasn't in that movie, the Edward... Norton, uh, but it's still technically part. But it's kind of okay. the bastard child. Yeah, yeah. So it. it started with Iron Man one, yes, right? Yeah, and then it went all the way to this last Avengers. Yeah. So it was like twenty two movies, something like that. Yeah, a couple phases. Yeah, it's okay. all mapped out in different phases. So, I, I mean, I would watch them. Like, I, if Iron Man's, if one of those movies are on and I'm not doing anything, I'll sit there and watch a little bit of it. Yeah. But I'm intrigued by the fact of someone like I like I like a marathon, I like a challenge. You know me. I've seen every ballpark. I like to yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to knock things off in a bulk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drink I'll drink as many beers as possible. Collect my shot glasses. Yeah. You know, stupid shit like that. Stuff that pisses off the wife. My uh, all my collections. If you haven't noticed in this living room, it's full of collections, if you will. Pancake. She still won't let me get four TVs, but we're still working on that one. There's I, been. Th- I think that's the way she's gonna hold her ground, man. Adam, you, you had your. You first off, there's <laughs> been six Sundays in a row. I gave her in a perfect example why I need three or more TVs in the in the in the living room, and they're legit examples. I mean, there's NASCAR, baseball, football, and hockey on, and golf all at the same time. Dude, dude, you know I love you, man, but I, 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 I there's really no reason to have that many televisions. This there is. That yes, but bulk. It is cool. Am I gonna say is it is it is it cool? Yes. Then I'm just gonna go to the Squire Club and go watch all, right. all these things at once. Cool. You know? I'll join you. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right then. <laughs> then we can do that. We'll go see some nudies. But, oh, she's taking the big black. Dildo. I will say it's pretty cool. Yep. But, uh If you had a man cave, okay, it would be totally fine to have ten TVs. Okay. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Not in this living room. Well, I think th- nothing I think- else. We can't even squeeze one more person in this. Living I don't. Room. Yeah, it would just look. Uh, I don't think it could work. Here. How about if there's a way I could design uh, it so it no, looked right? It's not happening in this living room. No. <laughs> I mean, it's always better to do it than ask forgiveness than ask for no. permission, right? No, Adam? Shh, don't reveal your secret. <laughs> 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 this is, this is, no. Like, what's the worst that's gonna happen? And you know, no, you're like, what, are we gonna get mad? Like, how mad are you gonna be? Like, for how long? Like an hour? Just stand at your mother's. <laughs> yeah, I'll be knocking at Ellen's. Door. At least she's close. <laughs> well, she'd be standing at my mother's. It's even better. I got the place to myself. I could throw a point on one of those three TVs and just let her roll. Ooh, that, I am curious what that would look like. I went to a dorm room in, uh, when I was at <laughs> UMass once. Not dorm room, uh, frat house, rather. They yeah. had a TV in one of the rooms that was called the porn room. Oh, man. And it was like a 24 hours just, re- just porn just playing on this TV. 
Are there like slug trails running down the television? I don't what? know. I don't you, know what. Oh, that sounds gross. It was more like you know, know. When, when you go to a museum and you see an exhibit and yeah. it's like, oh, that's interesting. And they, like yeah. they have like you, they have this movie that plays every twenty minutes when you walk in the exhibit. It was like that. Like people wouldn't wouldn't stand there for more than like a few minutes. They would just go in there, to look around, and there'd be like there was like a chair. Like it was very unique. There was like this extra small little closet room with a TV, plain porn. On like one of those DVD changes that had like a like fifty like DVDs in it, and yeah. it kept changing randomly. Okay, this is like skeevy awesomeness, and we should talk about. I want to know more about the Marvel. Uh, oh yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. off track. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, trying to get us back on yes. here, but I do, I want to file that one away. Yeah, yeah. All so right. I'm talking to Pat last night, and I go, hey, I noticed you went. I got asked you a few questions for the radio show. He's like, yeah, sure. I go, so how was it? He was like, it was good. I go, when did you sleep? I go, I need yeah. to know this. He goes, I he goes, I took a nap there in some of the movies that weren't so interesting. There was a gap between the movies where you can kind of rest up a little bit, like, like a okay. half hour, 45 minutes, so he, he catnapped. I go, did you use the showers? So they put these trailers in the parking lot where, where there were showers to shower. He's like, oh, yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. I don't know what that means, but he used the showers. Did he see Pasta Joe there? Probably. He goes, there wasn't a lot of people. He goes, the place was probably three quarters full. I want to know this because I haven't heard. How much was it? Uh, I, I didn't get that. But oh, I think it was probably like. I think it was probably like 30 bucks, 40 bucks maybe. Yeah. They gave you a pass, he said, Laney, and you can come and go anytime you want. He, he said he was going over to Easy Liquors to grab some booze and then sneak it in and then make him cocktail, and then he would watch a movie, get drunk, pass out. Yeah. Um, they gave you 25% off the concessions, which I thought was kind of stupid. I think, I, I th- I think what they should have done was raise the price a little bit to make it, like, say, 40 or $50 and make it all-you-can-eat concessions. Because what's a fucking hot dog or, or, or uh, a yeah. bad thing of popcorn costing? You know what I mean? Yeah, I see saying. Yeah. I mean, especially when there's only like say forty or fifty people. How much hot dogs? How many hot dogs and, and popcorn can someone actually eat in That's true. two days? You know what I yeah. mean? We, me and Eric had all you can eat seats at the Bruins, right? And it was like all you can eat hot dogs, you know, hamburgers, stuff like that. But, no, it wasn't even hamburgers. It was hot dogs, peanuts, popcorn, and soft drinks, right? Yeah. And nachos, and it was like shitty nachos, like the little pump of the cheese. I mean, at most, I think I ate five hot dogs. And I regretted it. <laughs> you know, those, those hot dogs aren't good. No. The, the idea of the hot dog is good at the time. Yeah, it's stomach turning. Yeah. Bullshit, though. It's not going to be good. Like, a Fenway Frank's good. For some reason, the garden hot dogs suck. I don't know why the garden hot dogs are so bad. I just get a sausage. It, but, yeah. yeah. I can do one. Like, anytime yeah. I go to the garden, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a freaking hot dog. Same thing at Fenway. But after I eat one, and I'm like... Belching it. Yeah, it's like, disgusting. The smell yeah. of it. It comes back yeah. up in chunks. I, I was telling her about the Especially time. Especially if you're drinking beer. Yeah. And you smell the beer oh, and the hot dog. That's the it's worst. It's like, remember the hot dogs in Jacksonville with the blue uh, buns? Yes, I still have like photos. Yeah. Free. No, there was, there there was, was I think they're green. They were like green. In, um, um, I think there's a photo of that. Well, where was that hockey game we went to? Fort oh, we were, in, uh, we were in Fort Lauderdale for the, the Florida Panthers game. Oh. That was the worst hot dog ever. Oh, really? She had a hot dog and almost threw up. I threw up at a baseball game once. When I went to, down to the uh, Rays game, I seen the Sox play the Rays like 20 years, uh, 10 years ago or something like that. Yeah. Was it, 10 years? it was 10 years ago. And um, they, they called them Devil Dogs at the time because they were the Florida, they were the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Oh, okay. And I had two bites of it, and all I remember is puking in the bathroom. I did have a little sunstroke, though, because I was at Bush Gardens all day, but, uh, you know. Yeah. So, he said it was cool. He said it was fun. Um, I, I I would almost I would have to bring a, a, a change of clothes, because you're sitting in that chair eating popcorn bit and, like, drinking and stuff. Like, you know you're going to be fighting. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you live close, like, I, I that would be, like, something that – and I should have checked to see if Wubin was doing something. I, I would have gone so, even if I wanted to see two movies. Rivera like, was but, one of ten th- theaters around the country. Oh, okay. So there were selected theaters that did it. There was one in every market. So, okay. like, New York had a market and Boston had a market. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I guess, I, I mean, I can only imagine. I asked him if there was any fucking going on in there. He goes, he didn't see any. It was mostly all guys. Was, and they all probably had mustaches and fat guts. It was a bunch <laughs> of uh, the typical guys you think you were going to a Marvel movie. Yeah. They weren't, like, studs, you know what I mean? I don't, hot chicks. I think that would have been worth it if it, I mean, there's 11 movies, and, ugh. Eleven and like, twenty two. Oh, uh, twenty two. It was twenty two movies. It was fifty six hours long. Maybe, but regardless, it would have been worth it, even for the price. Even if there was like, I mean, most of them you can watch on, you know, online or whatever like that. Now I'm but, hoping they do this for Star Wars. Oh, that'd be awesome. Because <sighs> Episode Nine comes out what in the, the summer? Uh no, uh, right before Christmas, like November. November. November, December. Yeah. So why wouldn't you do all? F- yeah, nine like Star Wars, and, and then Skywalker throw in saga. like, yeah, yeah. Then you can throw in like Solo, and you can throw in um, what was the one that between four and uh, Rogue One, Rogue One, yeah. yeah. 
See, I would go. I would go to that even if knowing I'm not going to be there for the whole thing. Even if I just, some movies are just better on the big screen. Oh yeah, you know some movies really are. Remember in '97 when they remastered the uh, original three? Yeah, yeah. It was, and it was the, was a lot the movies, and that time. was like a shitty. I mean, that's that's 20 years ago. The movie theater wasn't that good. No, it wasn't. But no. I remember when they built the new theater in um, Henry Vare. That's when the uh, one, two, and three came out around that time, around 2000. You know, 99, 2000. Yeah, I remember seeing. I see, oh, all right, I seen episode two and three at the New Revere Theaters. I remember episode one in 99, they were building the new theater, but they still had half the old theater attached to it. Remember they were doing that? I do remember and that. And they had like half time, the theaters yeah. still up in the old one, and then half of them the new one. You had to walk through these weird tunnels and shit like this. Yeah. I broke into that construction site. Well, there he goes again. He's humping away. I do wonder, though, like what the crowd looked like at certain during certain. There, there are a few in there that like I just have no desire to see. He again. said you lost track of all track of time yeah, because sure, you're yeah. in a dark room. You know, yeah. Unless you went into the lobby, you really didn't know what time it was, and looking at your clock, you know what I mean? So he did. He said he did leave though for a few of them, right? Yeah, he would. Wa- well, he, he like a movie that was boring. He would take a nap, or he would go and like halfway through and go to the liquor store and come back. But it was pretty much you walked into the theater, you showed your badge, and it was come and go whenever you wanted. No one bothered you. So I wonder how many of those people stuck around. Like I mean, obviously bathroom breaks and food aside, how many of them actually witnessed something from every movie at least? Yeah, because that's crazy. And a lot of people, maybe they just watched a few of them, then they came back because the. the, the the, the, this is the end game. Yeah, yeah. That, that that was the money shot right there. So yeah. you got in, you were the first one to see it before everyone, because that theater was isolated. Yeah. So the next show and after that was the first one, the public. So you were the first ones to see it. And more importantly, I wonder how many of these people actually have jobs. Like, how could you possibly like? I, uh, he said he took he took vacation days to do. Oh, this. He took vacation time. To do yeah, this. and he rearranged his work schedule a little bit. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. So hey, I mean, I don't know. Kind of debate. Oh, there's our guy. There's this is this guy still on? Yeah, he is. Yep, there he is. With there he is, smug right there. Smirk. He's a, oh, 1.4 million at this point right now, something like that. Yeah. He's uh, he is a little coggy too. Well, I guess he, he's kind of at this point. He's kind of on the right, I guess. Yeah. Mind you, he blows all his money and blowing hookers when he gets go back to, to Vegas. Didn't go to college. Numbers guy, love it, love it. He's gonna have. It's all numbers. Yeah. yeah he's a numbers guy. We, I was talking to Joe uh, Doubleback, and he said that they give you a book. That's what I said. Yeah, Were you the one talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. yeah. So if this guy has a t- touch of autism or uh, something like that. Maybe he just memorized the entire book. Maybe. I mean, maybe he knows every answer. There's just no stopping him. Yeah. If he has a photographic memory, he just knows it. I mean, I've seen him get maybe a, a dozen wrong total, and all like maybe he gets like two wrong an episode. He didn't. He almost. He almost lost a couple days ago. It Did was he? Close. He won by like fifteen bucks. I think. Really? Yeah, it was close. Dude, we were watching this one guy who was like, he f- totally fell apart. It looked like he was he was going and going, and he had a stroke. But the way he <laughs> plays is he does all the high ones first, and then he gets such a big lead, then he throws it all in on the da- daily double. I see. Then he doubles his money. So now he's already up 20 grand on the next person. So when he goes into the second round, he can kind of sit back a little bit and let it ride because it's going to be a, people can't catch up to him. Yeah. That's the problem. It's, it's amazing a, no one's done that before. It's a it's a strategy that it's it's yeah, exactly. I don't know why no one's done it before. It makes total sense. Do yeah, the high does. numbers first. Yeah. And you work your way up. Yeah, that's right. Before that everything I ever saw was people taking like the, the lowest. I guess I guess uh a Jeopardy tra- traditionalist, a very uh, upset with his method of playing. Probably. Oh god, there's somebody out there who's definitely pissed off. Oh, there's yeah. people blogging about it. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, there is a group of Jeopardy traditionalists up there in the interwebs who are literally very upset with his strategy and technique in uh, playing this game. Well, as Bill Belichick would say, read the rule book. Well, I mean, <laughs> right? he's no, not read the rule book. He hasn't broken any rules. No, so he's playing exactly. Read the rule yeah, book. Yeah, read the rule book, man. I mean, no one yeah. said you know exactly. It's it is what it is. I mean, just because you were afraid to uh, pioneer a new uh, venture. Yes. You know what I mean? Hmm. So you haven't seen Endgame yet, so no, you don't know no. what happens. Yeah, I'm going this weekend. Nice, yeah. three hours long. That's a, it's a quite a commitment. It is three commitment. Hours, one minute. I, I've been watching. I've been watching Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones has been insane. Is uh? You know? See, I don't watch that. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's I know they're killing a person off each week. It's just oh, the last. It's just the last season. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is it. There's two more episodes left, and it's over, right? Yeah. They were, HBO only uh, did there's five episodes. Okay. And they, and it took almost uh eighteen nineteen eighteen nineteen months. Okay. For the final season to finally get together and. 
Yeah, five episodes, and some of them are like an hour and a half. And this is it. This is this over. Is it. It's over. People are like obsessed with this stuff. I'm not into that kind of stuff. It's yet. a good show. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought I would be too. I'm uh, not into Zelda, so I, I'm I not assume, either. So I assume this is not my. my no, forte. I'm not. I'm not into Zelda. I, I like the the video game is cool, but I wouldn't be interested if they made a movie. I'm not into that. Yeah, like um, like this stuff. Like uh, I'm not into Harry Potter. It doesn't really do. No, there's no ma- there's no magic really. No, this. or uh, what's the other one? Lord of the Rings. Is that more like I don't know. No, it's not like Lord, no. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't. I People wouldn't try selling me on saying it's like porn, and I'm like, if I'm gonna watch, oh, there's a lot of nudity. I'm like, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just watch porn. I mean, there's a lot of nudity. You know what I mean? I mean it's like, why am I gonna I mean, watch kind of porn? Watch the girl on YouTube. You yeah, know, well, <laughs> it's exactly we were watching the, <laughs> the little so, hoochie on on YouTube. Uh, Sue, so you missed it. The uh, girl who loves herself on YouTube yeah. did a whole episode where she just put new new outfits on. Well, what I always liked about uh, Game of Thrones, what drew me to it anyway, was they're not afraid. I feel like a lot of shows get afraid to kill off main characters. Yeah. Like, you could tell, okay, you know, with, you know they're not going to kill him off. Game of Thrones, out of nowhere, oh, that guy just fucking died. You well, I mean, isn't coming. it, like, it over you anyway, know? so it's like, might as well kill him all Well, no, even before. Even oh, before. Okay. Like, someone just died. It's like, wait a minute, really? You need a lot of you characters. Know? <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Uh, they were they were they relied on their writing so well that they knew that they could kill off people and it uh, people wouldn't bat an eye or at least oh. be at least you'd at least be worried about it. like oh my god I can't believe you did that I'm pissed off but then the next day you still want to know what's going to happen yeah you know but now I, the the final season I feel like it's it's playing into the fan base too much and I feel like they're starting to get afraid to kill off um, some of these main characters but it's going to have to happen well you know? eventually you would think right yeah. I mean I don't know it's not my cup of tea I yeah. guess you know and it's a good show you should give it a whirl someday. Yeah. yeah, give it give it three. Episodes. I, I didn't watch uh, Sopranos until it was free on Netflix. You still, it's on Netflix. What, 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 it was on something. It's an HBO what, show. No, but it, I mean, it was on. Oh, that's right. They edited it. Ended up on uh, yeah, A and E. Something like uh, that. You could, you could watch it on the man or something like that. Yeah, it was on A and E. Yeah, I mean, I have I, I don't have time for that shit. Probably she gets yeah. me into these fucking shows that I watch, and I'm like, like I've been watching um, Double Shot of Love. Have you been watching that? With uh, Polly D, I watched and, the first uh, two episodes. And what's no, the his first face? episode? And uh, Vinny and Polly D. Yeah, so I became kind of secretly obsessed with the show, and I've been so the all the broads in the show, right? They're oh, obviously not that great. No, they're I they're, they're nothing to write home about. What that girl? He, 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 oh, laugh. that girl was terrible. <laughs> so the show is very weird and has no really flow. It seems like there's just some bunch of drunk people like let's get an idea, let's get these two guys and a bunch of broads, and then they can just see what happens and we'll eliminate them mm-hmm. little by little. So all these chicks are. If you go on their Facebooks, they all have fan pages. Yeah. Which I'm going to say, I have almost 8,000 fans on my fan page, and most of these girls are barely <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> so um, I think I'm a little more famous than some of these hookers. So I'm just going to put it right there. If you're watching this show right now, you're one of the close to 8,000 people of my radio <laughs> show and fan page. <laughs> but just saying. Um, <laughs> like, this, those, uh, there's a variety of them. If you look on them, they're, they pretty much were using the show as a launching pad. For uh, for something, well, I was thinking the other day. Did you ever see the uh, the Polly D project? I never saw that show. That no, I never like seen five that. episodes. Yeah, was, no, right? I didn't know Polly D is a kid. Yeah, yeah, he's like Eric Powers. Yeah, maybe. I except am jealous. Without, of except with the TV. You know how I know you're getting older too when you're jealous of someone's hair. I'm looking at Polly D's hair. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it! I wish. You I think had it's that. a wig? I, I don't think so. You wear his hair like that. The guy who talks like this. Uh, sometimes you go to the store. Sometimes trying to do walking. Yes, <laughs> walking has a nice. His hair's like that. I'm jealous. Yeah, you know you're getting older when you see that. And you, yeah, you, you're like looking at someone's hair. I hope the 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 best thing for this world to happen is if Polly D just suddenly develops the the fucking bald spot, like that little horseshoe in the back. Yeah, and then he ends up doing have to what Trump does and has to comb over, blow up. He's gonna get skin cancer probably. The, the, the melanoma. The, I'm telling you, there's no Italian that doc. Uh, if you're from deep south Italy, but the darker ones are from uh, the yeah, southern. Yeah, because Italy. they're almost African. Yeah, exactly. Sicily was, you know, how the story. No, but Italy. I, I mean, the northern Italians are pale skin. My grandmother was yeah, hundred percent Italian. She was There's light. Some blondes too. She was like some Irish blondes, white. No, but he's like you know? he's like African American doc. Mm. Like, there's no white man that should be that doc. I guess like you can work that over time. He almost time. looks Indian. He does the, his his skin color is is possibly Seven Eleven Indian. His nose is kind of flat. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's a little really bit of a touch of the African. Or maybe his yeah, Sicilian yeah, roots are a little more, uh... A little something you know. going on there. You know, nothing's better than seeing someone's Ancestry.com and they're from, like, Sicily? Yeah. And all the other countries that pop up? Yeah. Like, the whole entire world, you might as well color the fucking map. Because you get a little <laughs> bit of something on there, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so that show. Interesting. We, uh, Game of Thrones. We talked about uh, the girl, the hoochie, doing her outfits. 
Mm. Me and er- me and uh, Adam were watching. We know there was some perverted guy sitting there just, oh, with definitely. His, his dick hanging out, just touching himself. She, what was that thing she was wearing? It looked like a pajama. Uh, a romper. A romper. What's a romper? A romper is like uh, I truly believe no woman over the age of uh, twelve should be wearing one. Okay. And it's basically <laughs> like a onesie. But here's the thing about rompers uh, that you I was someone explained it to me once, and I was like, don't you then technically if you go to the bathroom you have to take the whole thing off? And she's yeah. Like, yeah. Why, there's an underpot to the rumble? Not really. It's, like, connected. So you have to, like, take the whole thing off in a stall if you can go to the bathroom. Sue, you have a romper? Yeah. You do? You still wear rompers at your age? Yeah. Really? <sighs> really? They look like a pajama. I know over 12 should wear a romper. Do you wear underwear in the romper? Yeah. When you go to the bathroom, do you, you have to take the whole thing off, though, right? It's all, yeah, see, yeah, it's all so connected. So how? how? Where is it connected to? I'm confused. Like, it's like a onesie. It, not, not really. It's like a... Oh, so it's like a leotard with, like, a skirt? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Oh. Your shorts and your top are I see. It blows my mind. So it's like you're in a stall to oh. go to the bathroom. You're gonna take the whole thing off. It, it Do you ever fool around? For, you ever? Like, f- you want to know something that would blow your mind? What's that? You should have seen me going to the bathroom in my wedding dress. <laughs> I did. I watched. Oh. Elizabeth oh. had to help me. Like an army of a. Uh... Oh. She had a lot of like fucking straps in the back. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, oh. that's a, that was like a that's like a NASCAR. At that game. point, I would I would have just right. got a pair of scissors and cut a little hole out in the bottom and looked at the dress because <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna wear it again, you know. So the dress you're right. was hollow through the bottom. So just stand on the toilet and let. There was so <laughs> much, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> there was so much fluff. Yeah. I would have peed all over. I don't think I went to the bathroom during that wedding. I pissed before the wedding, but I don't remember pissing during yeah, the wedding. I, I didn't see you guys disappear from the floor really because you guys were. Going table to table the whole time. Yeah, so. we're like the fucking president. Yeah. Going town to town. We spend half the night just saying, how do you I never thought of that, too. You need an army. You probably need yeah, an army people to go to the bathroom. That, would, that sucks. Do you have a, yeah. what, are those, what are those things the women wear that kind of make them, they're like a leotard underneath their, they wear them to make them look skinnier? It brings in all the fat. What are those things called? Spanx. Spanx. Do you ever fool around for a girl wearing Spanx? Spanx? No, no, I know she had have. Spanx on? <laughs> no. No. Yeah, so this goes. Uh, uh, we have the equivalent, though. Isn't it? Like, it was, is it a, some kind of belt? It's it's a man thing. Uh, yeah. The, uh, but I mean, so called. this kid I went to college with, right? He comes into the design studio one day and he goes, dude, you know what? There's this, there's this girl that we went to college with that pretty much everyone just passed around. And she 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 was known as the blowy girl. She's the bicycle. Yeah. yeah. The large bicycle. But, you know, so this kid was like, yeah, I went to this party and so and so was there. And he's like, dude. We're sitting there in the bedroom, and I'm going up her shirt and trying to, you know, grab some tit. You know what I mean? Because you figure you go up a girl's shirt, you feel some skin, you feel the bra, work your way behind it. You know, and then you're like a fucking bomb guy working for the bomb squad trying to disarm. Yeah. You know, pulling the right, you know, taking the bra off, and once you get it off, you're good. He goes, he couldn't, he was wrapping around, he didn't, he couldn't, he had, and she had another shirt on, so he's going lower. Yeah. To see if he can go under. And she had like a leotard on, he said. And she's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to get my, my bra off. And he's like, why? She's like, because I'm wearing like a like fucking a leotard or something of that nature. Like a belly. Yeah. Like, what'd you do? He's like, she, she, he goes, it was like having sex with a sail. A fool around with a sail because she, when he, she took her shirt and pants off, she was still had the leotard on. I go, how'd yeah, you get it off? That would kill me, man. That would, that yeah, would he goes, he cool. killed it. And he goes, I, go, I guess you just got blowy from her, I guess. But maybe that's why. But you know, what, you know what's even more messed up? They do make a male romper. They, I was watching something on YouTube with these T-shirts that men wear on the fit. Yeah. That is a male romper. Okay, they have a T-shirt. It's just a T-shirt that makes the guy look jacked. It sucks in all his fat and puts it in the right places and makes him look like he's in shape. Yeah, I don't... I, don't, I almost I, bought one because no. I'm curious. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't wear that. Yeah, that's... That, yeah, My that's, brother-in-law would probably wear that. That's not how... So, what do you think? <laughs> if Artie, this, Would you want Artie to wear a male romper? <laughs> no, I see my brother-in-law wearing that. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely. He wears them. You per- should have seen what he wore for Easter. He had like a a, a, uh, a tulip uh, suit on. Oh man. Yeah, with his perfect oh, beard that you hate. Boy. Yes, perfect beard that I fucking <laughs> can't stand. It's too perfect. I don't like it. It <laughs> almost. It, he looks like the guy. the beard. Who remember the guy who did the infomercials? Who ended up dying? Yeah, for the the cleaner stuff. Yeah, OxyClean. OxyClean. Uh, Billy Mays. Billy Mays. Yeah. Billy Mays? Yeah, he had like a he had a perfect goatee and beard. He did. These dogs yeah. have been out of control since the minute I got home. He's he's a funny guy to his credit, but there's something about him. Just I don't want that. That's the beard, man. Yeah. It's too clean cut. It's too perfect. I don't know. Did you want to go as my plus one for this one? Really? Yeah. What is it? What about me? I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, do I have to take you? Or is it like? <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, I don't know. Daggers. There's a s- split second of a dagger. Do you really want to go? Just fake sick. Yeah. <laughs> She's got pneumonia out of the stand. I mean, it's a, I have a plus one, so like, who do I take? Do I, do I, can I get a good... No, you don't. Can I get Vivian, who the walks the streets of L.A.? invitation was addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Demadia. Well, I have, and I apparently they, apparently they sent it to the wrong house. They sent to my they sent my parents' invitation to my house. Well, what ha- <laughs> hypothetically though, what would happen? Let's say Suze has pneumonia. Yeah, right. You, you I'm know, still gonna plus one has pneumonia. Yeah. <laughs> so could there be a stand-in? Yeah. No, I'm, be, yeah. I'm, I'm taking someone. I'll be a stand-in. Someone's coming. I'll be a stand-in. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Suze, someone. I'm, I'm, I'm your stand-in. Okay. Okay. I, I'll take the most randomest person. I might I might take uh, uh, Vivian. What was her last name? And pretty woman. I'll go. I got a free meal. There you go. Maddie's all about the free meals. <laughs> I'm all about free meals. You see Maddie's commentary in the text message about, um, oh, what the fuck was it? He was talking about how he didn't like something because he thought he was fat. Oh, um, yeah, it was. Um, he know. said, um, let's see. Only song I know by him is Danger Zone. I sing it about when I'm about to eat bad. Highway to the Zantac Zone, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Fatty Maddie, everyone. I guess who's not watching today? Alex Wallace. Yes. Yeah, so he's got, I mean, he's got a kid. You know. Maybe. Put a kid up. Watch the show. Enjoy yourself. He'll probably listen you know? to it later. Maybe. Yeah, he'll get to he it. He sits there. He'll get to I it. I do get comments from later on in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alex Wallace, a.k.a. Fatty Maddie. So I I do want to talk about the car dealership. Yeah. So you got a new car. I did. Oh, yeah. And that experience was uh, trying at, at best. At, at, yes, at Woburn Toyota. Bad people. Horrible. Nope. Woobin. First of all, you went to Woobin. Well, I actually had a great experience there when I was younger. Yeah. The, it was Change really of management, cool. I'm assuming, over the well, years. Yeah, it has been all like 13. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, they built the, the, the new complex they built there. I, I, I will say, uh, first, I'm going to start off with the good things about okay. Woobin Toyota. Yeah. The building looks nice. Mm. The building looks really nice. Is this the one right, it? just right off 95? Yeah. Yeah. They, it's this giant, tall thing. It, it, uh, inside, it's trouble. great. It looks, yeah, the Woobin Mall a little bit. Cross the... Cross yeah, the, like cl- close by. Yeah, okay. close, Yeah, it looks really... It, inside, it's really, really nice. You know, you got ESPN and sports. They make you feel really homey. Oh really? You know, it's really oh, nice okay. in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um the the dude who I went on a test drive with who who was the guy who was dealing with, he was really nice too. Great guy. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. His fucking boss Dick. Complete dick. Wow. Right? So here's the thing. I, I, I went on a test drive. It was a car, it was great. You know, I sat down, me and him were talking, and um I put and he's like, you know, I put down my offer. Now here's the thing about how I feel about offers. Yeah. I always come in low. And if you're insulted by that, that's your problem. Because here's the thing. Once you go to a certain number, remember, you can't go back down. No. So it's a, And I understand. I'm going to go. That number is going to go up. Yeah. And your number is going to go down. You know what I mean? Like When you see exactly. a number online, you know, you know that's not what you're going to pay. Just like how they should know that my initial offer is not the number. Like, no. That they're going to agree to. You give a number, you know? they say, well, it's the best you can do. Can you do any better? Uh, I really have to stay yeah. with, at least within this parameter. I won't even tell them that. And then, you know, they, I, just, I just won't do it. Yeah. So, so I, I came in low, right? And I'm thinking that they felt insulted by the number that I gave. So then he comes out with his manager, okay. right? And his manager comes over and is like, hey, so my name is, my name is I just wanted to come over and say hi. Uh, I'm I'm so and so, and um I don't I don't remember his name. I don't, I was so blinded by what he said yeah, was, that I forgot his so name. Insulted by right? his presence. Um, I think I know his name because yeah. I looked it up online, and, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So I'm not gonna. Th- I would throw him under the bus if I could remember, it, but I can't. Um, but so he's like I'm so and so, and um I just wanted to say you know I just want to say hi. Yeah. But. So our cars, he goes into how analytics work and their prices are determined, and they, they determine the value through other sales in the area. He's getting and, all and, scientific. And, yeah, he is. He's trying to throw – he's an older gen. He's an older guy, very yeah. older guy. And, um, but then he's like, you know, you come in here, and I did his thing. I walked in with like a folder. Like I was ready. You know what I mean? This is a big purchase. Next yeah, to yeah. a house, it's, it's one of the bigger things you're going to You got to do the research life, before. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I could tell when I first walked in that they were not happy that I walked in with a folder. They seemed very uncomfortable, <laughs> right? But I wasn't a dick about it all. Either. So, but he's like, he's like, you come in here with your smirk, and you think that like that's like the price. He said that to you. Yeah, he's, that's exactly what he said to me. He said you come in wow. here with your smirk, but that's okay. That's okay. That's and then he followed it up. But that's okay, right? You should and, be like, sir, you must not sell a lot of cars. 
I did that's honestly. I was I was shocked that this yeah. is how he was talking. I couldn't think of a comeback. Yeah. And he's like, "Well, how'd the car ride? How was it?" And I'm like, "It was really good." He's like, "Yes, yeah, see, see, our cars go through this." And he's like, talking about the cars again, right? And I was just kind of, and I took it. I was just like, "Okay, okay." So then he walks away, and I say that the, the kid comes back who I was who I was initially dealing with. Who yeah. again? He was a really nice kid, and I and I said to him, and I'm like, "What the hell is his problem? Like, he's a tough nut to crack, huh?" And then um. He's like, yeah, the, you know, the internet totally killed the car sales business and whatever. I'm like, okay, well, he's, I'm like, well, so. Um, well, I mean, it just made people more uh, educated before they go purchase something that they had no idea prior yeah. that they had any idea He's of. like, if you were going to come down, because his, his manager says, if you were going to come down two or $300 more, like, I'd have been fine with that. But what you're asking is like, ridiculous. Our cars, blah, blah, blah. So I, I was like, and I said to the kid, I was like, listen, you do realize like the offer I gave isn't. Like I was gonna go higher. Like this is how negotiation works. Yeah, yeah. You come lower, I come higher. You play the we game. meet somewhere in the middle yeah, here, right? Tangle and he's like, okay. Well, then what were you gonna make me an offer? What were you gonna offer? I'm like, I would have went here. And he's like, hold on. So then they go to the finance. So the he goes to the manager again. He goes, all right. Well, I have this car. I'm like, listen, we're not gonna be able to do business. I'm out of here. Yeah. Right. So I walked out, and then I I went to Ira Toyota in Danvers. Yep. And um, I got the. Pretty much the same exact. Granted, uh, the interior of the one movement I liked a little bit better, but okay. it was the same car. Yeah, yeah. The same car, practically the same mileage, plus or minus maybe two hundred miles. Okay. Right for about six hundred dollars cheaper. There you go. Right, and I, I was just I couldn't. You got to use the it. approach my father uses. Uh, we bought my first Jeep many moons ago, about twenty years ago, and he uses the uh, approach. We goes into we go into the dealership. Mm. My car is sitting there that we're gonna get. He had some numbers. He got online, all this stuff. He told the guys what we're looking to pay. The guy went like five grand more. Than what's and then he calls him a fucking thief, storms out of the place and says, I'm not doing business and has the guy chase him out of the place. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, next time I buy a car, I'm taking a big arm. Yeah, so my father was like, and then the guy's uh, like, I don't he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, wait a minute. We, we, we can talk about this, you know? Yeah. And he's like, that's outrageous, the price. He's like, well, what, what are you looking for? And then he sat down. So when my sister got her car, the same exact thing. He goes into the dealership. It says a number that he thinks is a reasonable number. Yeah. The guy goes, well, ah, well, we can't really do that. He goes, you're a fucking thief and storms out in front of everyone. <laughs> and then gets the car down to the price. It's very uncomfortable. You do not want to be with him when this goes yeah. on. Um, very uncomfortable. Yeah. But I, I'm more of a, uh, uh, of a more of a passive kind of uh, negotiator where I, I, I do the same thing. I, can't, I come in with the folder. Mm. What I like to do is I go online and I see... What other places are selling the cars for? Yeah. What you know? What I expected value for this vehicle is? Yeah. Um, and then I get myself a ballpark number. I know this is the minimum I've seen it for. This is the max I've seen it for. This is what I'm comfortable paying for. And so I come in with a number in my head, yeah. but I don't like to I don't show my cards. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you, you don't want to. No, yeah. because if you do that, you you know, obviously, if you go in higher than they're going to even give it to you for, yeah. then you lose. But you can never go lower. Like once you yeah, put once it, that you get number, number down, you're stuck. That's yeah. why I do. Even if they were insulted by, like, here's the thing: it was at it was like fourteen, fourteen, three hundred. The one I was looking at, I said twelve. Yeah, and I had I had actually information of ones that are at thirteen two hundred. Yeah, yeah, right. So, but I just said twelve. I know it's not. I'm not going to pay no. that. But they seemed insulted that but I said that. But if they were like, you know, say thirteen five, and you could show them, well, this place is selling for thirteen yes. two. Yes, and I, ha- I had that. Can you get me at least to the place I have evidence that they sell this for? I, I, I honestly, it's if like buying they, a house. It's the same exact thing as buying a house. If they treated me right and were nice, I probably would have won fourteen hundred. Selling a house is even worse than buying a house. Fourteen thousand, not yeah. fourteen hundred. Fourteen thousand. I would have won fourteen thousand if they treated me right. When I sold my house, it was pretty much like a numbers game, and you have a number that you want to sell it for, and then you hope there's a bidding war so it goes up. But sometimes there is no bidding war. Sometimes it's like they go under, and you're not getting yeah. any other fucking. That you priced it way too high, so they come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, it's it's a fucking negotiating game. It's I, I am I am happier that these days it makes it a lot harder for them to fuck you over because it, you get a lot if, more evidence. Yeah, you, know? you have a lot more research you yeah. can do online, more mm-hmm. comparisons, more whatever. So honestly, it, it's kind of like if you get fucked over, that's your fault. Exactly. Because you can. I mean, granted, you got to do more work. Yeah. You got to go to other dealerships. You got to walk around here and talk to people. I mean, you know what but, a car is worth. Yeah. You know, roughly. You know, it's a, it's a hundred different websites you can find to tell you. You know. Yeah. But it's a painful trying experience, and it is. I hate it. I hate it more than anything. You gotta like, the two, two times I've got a car was so I bought the my Jeep I had for fifteen years, the engine blew up. So yeah. I bought my Civic, that was dire straits. I needed a vehicle, so I had like a four day That's race period to buy a fucking in the car. World. Yeah. So I knew that I can only negotiate to a certain point, but I had to like you know you you have a number where you can afford, and then the same thing with my van. When I got my van, 
I had totaled that Civic and had like a week grace period to get a new vehicle. And you yeah. can't be without a car. You know what I mean? It's like, so when I bought my last Jeep, I had all the time in the world because I was at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just fucking, it is what it is. So I, you know, I did the research, I pulled the trigger and then I went to the dealership and did pretty much what you did with my fold. I'm like, listen, guy down the street selling it for this price. Give me to this price. I'll buy it from you. Otherwise I'm going to go buy it from the guy down the street. Yeah. And I'm like, can you, can you sweeten the offer? So I got yeah. a free year of oil changes and shit like that. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, you go a little bit. I, I did think about having like a friend of mine like take a picture of me like this at my new car and the price tag and then emailing it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but I was like, I'm gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go. What a what an asshole. Like, here's the thing. Like, I understand it's not the it's not the rejection part that bothers me. Sometimes deals don't work. Yeah. They can say, you know what, sir, we can't accommodate this. Um, we can't do. I'm sorry, we're not, I don't think we'll be able to do this. And, and we'll let you know if something else comes in that's around that range. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that is a normal thing to say. Exactly. Not the, you come in here with your smirk. That guy sounded like, like a pompous ass. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is not very sales friendly. No, it's not at all. No. But I wonder if they were, here's the thing though. I wonder if they were playing good cop, bad cop because once the next day when I found my other car at, at, at Ira in Danvers. <laughs> did you pay, did you pay zero down at Ira? Like no, I, I put, I actually put like 50% down. Um, 60. But, um, so the one I found my next car, I, Driving home, and wouldn't you know? Guess who calls me? Toyota Woburn. Oh, of course. Yeah, right. yeah. They'll probably call you for the next two two months. I haven't had another call since. Really? Actually. Yeah. No, there got- was some guy who's like, "Hey, we we didn't meet. Uh, I know you were in the other day, but I would really see you know if you're still interested." Do you do uh, the thing where you uh, you go online, you put your email address and shit like that? Do you ever do that when you're looking for cars? No, I did it once and I regret it. So when I was looking, <laughs> yeah, because you get about a hundred phone calls. The fuck alone. Yeah. I did yeah. that with my Jeep because I was specific, specifically looking for a yellow four door Jeep. Four door Jeep. Yeah. And. It got in September, so it's the end of the season, so they're starting to get rid of the 2018s and starting to bring in the 2019s at the time. Yeah. So it's a good time to buy a car is usually in the fall because that's when they're doing the transition. But there's this low inventory because a lot of these places don't have a lot of vehicles, but the ones they have, you can get. So I had to do that. I went to the Jeep database on Jeep.com and put what I was looking for and found what I needed. But like for like two weeks later, I've been getting phone calls from every Jeep dealership around the fucking... Well, t- now they text you. Yep. Now they don't even fucking give a shit. Yeah. Fucking, here's a story for about texting too. So I'm online looking for, we're looking at houses, right? And um, so on Zillow, this house pops up. It says single family house in Charlestown, four hundred thousand dollars. Right, awesome, right. Hey, Charlestown's nice. It's, well, it's beautiful. It's, yeah. I mean, and I go, it seems too good to be true. So I googled the address, looked at everything, and it had like a, uh, it said a detached house, but it looked like a townhouse on on the thing. So I emailed I so I, I emailed the person and I sent him a text but he texted me back, right? Yeah. He goes, Are you interested in this? I go, I'm a little confused. I'm looking at the house right now. The map is showing downtown Boston, which is not Charlestown. I go, when I Google the address, it shows a house for sale in Charlestown, but the picture you're showing doesn't match the street view when I Google it. <laughs> I go, I'm a little confused, give me some information. Wow, man. So that's, he texts back when you want to see the house, we can arrange to see the house. I go, listen, I go I got a realtor that I use in. I just want to get more information before I bother them with all these details. Yeah. So the guy doesn't give me any details. So the next day, I, uh, I, I text my buddy Joe, who's my realtor, a.k.a. lawyer. And uh, I go, listen, buddy. I go, here's this house. Here's the link. Can you do some research for him? So the, everything has like an MLS number. So you reach there. He goes, funny. He goes, house shows it's in downtown Boston. The description says it's in Charlestown, but the house is actually in Hyde Park. And uh, I go, that explains it. Uh, That's why you get a $400,000 house in Hyde Park. Hmm. Now, not the most desirable neighborhood in Boston to live no. in. It was too good to be true. The house in Charlestown for that much money, like literally a stone's throw from the Bunker Hill Monument. Yeah, that area is nice, but go three blocks over. That's the worst projects yeah. in Boston. Well, it was, right, it was right across the street from the projects. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. But it didn't, the, the house value was like, say, 400000 they were selling it for. But any property in the neighborhood was like close to seven to a million. You're parking on street, too. Probably right. Just had two garages. Well, the houses they were advertising had two garages, but it wasn't the real house. It was a fa- Man, pretty much fucked up. So you gotta watch out in Zillow and stuff like this, especially in the big cities and stuff like this. They'll put fake stuff on there. We were looking at something. Me and but, Sue, we were looking at some condo, and and they didn't properly. They're not using the tool for its right. They're using it as like, so instead of putting like a, a house on there to sell and giving all the information, they're using it as like marketing for like other shit that so it's like bait click almost. But do they really think that's going to get them that far? Because sooner or later, no. you have to see the house. Well, and, and you're going to realize. And yeah. the fact is, like I did, I looked at it, and usually I, I go, well, then you just get the MLS number to someone who's a realtor. They'll look it up for you and yeah. tell you the facts of it. 
It's like a VIN number in a cop. So what do these people think they're accomplishing by doing that? Because you're going to have to look at it yourself eventually exactly. and realize this is bullshit. Or maybe they're yeah. targeting someone who lives in California who's looking to move in Boston and heard Charlestown was a good neighborhood. True. Or maybe they're hoping like, oh, you know, we're going to put this. But once they see it, we'll win them over. Or, yeah. <laughs> or they'll be like, hey, listen, this is the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, there was a mistake. But we have a house in Charlestown for triple the price. Oh. You know what I mean? It's like. So it's, it, I think it's traps. Obviously, we know the neighborhood I and mean, we know the area, but it's like maybe someone who's not from around here. I could see that happening. Huh. I hear stories all the time about people when I were in college getting apartments who are from other state and all of a sudden they're in Roxbury and yeah. they don't realize where they rented their apartment because they didn't do any research about the neighborhoods and stuff yeah. like this. Oh, I got a question. Would you ever buy a house off Craigslist? No. <laughs> I mean, I know somebody okay. sold their house on the Craigslist. The only time I would if it was like, say, like 50 grand and I was, this was my business, I was buying old houses and flipping them and stuff like this, yeah. I wouldn't. Like, go and be like, hey, honey, we're going to have our, <laughs> our home, our, our dream home. Found this dream. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Craigslist is the type of place to buy houses or even cars for that matter. Yeah. Maybe boats or like, recreational vehicles, but I, I wouldn't go as, you know. I, I feel like if you have a, like, let's say if you have a realtor at your, at your disposal. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If it, same thing with cars. If you have a mechanic at your disposal. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Sure. But, like, for the com most common people, yeah, definitely bad idea. <laughs> I think anyone who, yeah, I, I think if you're going to buy a car on Craigslist, you should have a consultant mechanic that goes with you. To yeah, a friend of yours who, you know, yeah. knows their cars, to can take a look at it at a garage. Exactly. And know? I think if anyone who buys yeah. a house out there, when you find something you like on Zillow or any of those websites, I think you really should get someone who is a realtor involved in this before you go and between pretend you're a realtor and i'm gonna do this myself <laughs> yeah that's because a bad idea. no there's a lot of information out there that you just don't know until you know but uh, everyone thinks they're an expert in everything apparently you know i know my i know my limits yeah. i know where i can go to a certain point that i need to bring in the pros you know what i mean i yeah. wish i i asked more i do know somebody uh that used to live across the street i don't know them anymore but they they sold their house on craigslist really yeah i, I mean i mean it's very <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess, I mean, buying a house is, you, there's a lot of legalness that goes into it. It's not like you're just giving someone a suitcase full of cash and then you move into the house. Yeah, or a title to a car. Yeah, you're, there's uh... like, there's a little more involved in a house sale. Like, there's taxes, there's like, you know, registering the, the property. It, yeah, it, it, so you can't really screw someone on a house. Yeah. You can screw someone on a car, though. There are ways to screw somebody in a house. I know somebody who sold a house. Now, it, I'm kind of 50-50 on this on whose fault it really is. Because, all right, so let's say you sell your house. Yeah. The walls aren't insulated, <laughs> right? So that means all the heat's gone. You're well, screwed, right? Did they get it get inspected? But his, no, but they weren't told that was that was the case, but they never got it inspected either. Yeah, so there, when you sell the house, you're not legally obligated to oh, you're not. express anything that's wrong with the house, but you, you are legally obligated to answer the questions correctly if you just asked. So, so for example, like, you go to the realtor, <laughs> you go to the realtor, are the walls in this house insulated? They can go, we're not sure. And if they say yes, and if it's not insulated, then you have a case. But if they, usually most realtors would be like, we're not sure. And then this stuff would be picked up on inspection. Okay. So they push the burden of trust to the inspector. Now, you know what? No, say my house had a fucking beam that was about to collapse, right? I'm not going to express that. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm going to let someone bring that up to my attention. But then you have to say, yeah. I mean, and if they ask, it's pretty much, you know, you see, you know, some of that stuff you could see, you know, yeah. when did you replace the roof last year? And he clearly didn't, you know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff like that, you know, but like, so when you buy a house, you should get it inspected because in the end of the day, like when the house we almost bought, we got, in, we, we liked it. We kind of knew there was something up. Yeah, yeah. And I we got inspected. That, that, that's the one and, in, uh, in uh, damage. North Shore. Yeah, yeah. No damage, and yeah. That, yeah, where I work. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it, and that closed the deal. Yeah. We, we were like, ah. Yeah. Okay. So then hypothetically by this logic. Okay, I like this. Let's go extreme here. Yeah. Let's say like the, the house is haunted. Cabinets can slam yeah. any time. Yeah. But here's the thing. There is no, even though I believe in ghosts, there yep. is no definitive proof scientifically that ghosts mm. exist. So therefore, if someone asks you, is this house haunted? You're supposed to disclose that. Mm. But since they don't really exist... You could I, say I guess I you could lie because right? it's one person's uh, interpretation of what spirits and ghostly activity and paranormal like stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? 
Yeah, I, I guess I don't Blood's know. running down walls. Okay, I don't know if there's a court of law that would if you, they brought you to it and said, "Do you have ever experienced paranormal activity in this house?" And you had to, you know, swear an oath that you did or did not. If that would be held up in court, I don't, I don't know how before, that works. Before the jury deliberates, let's let's go to the house and watch the blood run down the walls. You do have to acknowledge <laughs> if someone was murdered or killed or in a That's house. That's true. Yes, that I do know, and I think in public records you could. I think if you if you ask if someone died in the house, they have to disclose that, that if sense. it's to your knowledge. Like say your grandma, like my like my grandmother died in her house, and they sold it like ten years later. I, I doubt the guy was flipping the house anyway, so I doubt the guy even got into detail if anyone died in the house. Yeah. I I would I would assume that any house over fifty to sixty years old, someone has probably died in it. Yeah, I think the person I think so. My mother's house, my parents' house, I think is haunted. Um, because the lady who was married to the guy who built the house uh. died in the house. She died of cancer. Okay. So when my sister was little, she used to see ghosts all the time. Lots of kids have that. So Eric, she yeah. used to she used to run around. She was running around the house one day, and my mother's like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Oh, I'm running with my friend." Yeah. W so little you know, kids, it's hard to. But they say little kids and animals. See we do. Same, yeah, right? little kids uh, do have more. Um, hey, do you think it's because they they're they're so naive that they. Like maybe me and you see shit and we just play it off as nothing. Maybe I've not. Of maybe that. not you. No, I, know I don't. Probably saying. me more than you because I've, I know I've, you're into that shit. But I'm, like, I'm into that. I'm, I've always been kind of sensitive to that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. I think it's a combination of things. I think it's a combination of um, when the, when the little kids. You don't know if that imaginary friend. Could be an imaginary friend. Could be. Could be. Or just if it's a ghost. You don't. You, yeah, don't, you really, really don't know. know. You know what you I mean? Can't really so, sit them down and talk to them. Yeah, about it's right? really yeah. tough. Yeah, you that's know? true. What about animals? You think? Or you think just did it because their IQs and they're they're not that intelligent. They see things and animals are weird. Yeah, they're, they're... like Noah's afraid of the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So like we we roll that vacuum cleaner over there, she'll lose her mind. She yeah. won't go anywhere near it. She's afraid of the trash room. Yeah. I don't know why she's afraid of the trash. Like certain things like spook her. Yeah. It's not necessarily a ghost. It's just objects. Yeah, you know? animals have a weird sense of things. I'm not an animal, so I, I yeah. don't know. But they do have a weird sense of things. It's like, why the hell are you freaking out? <laughs> like, you know? like, we do what? take them out you in know? the back. By the way, there's going to be a visitor pocket opening up in the back. Don't we take the dogs out? You're kidding. There's like 50 spots opening up pretty soon. It's all paved and ready to go. So That's Sweet. Your uh, availability to find a visitor pocket. I almost took the cones down today and opened it up to you for your... That's awesome. I was I don't know why there's cones up. They, all the lines are painted and the numbers are there. I have wow. no idea where they have cones. So today's been a good day too. I got a visitor spot like when you only first take that right, like yeah. those those there's like five spots that are oh, in front yeah. of another building yeah, right yeah. there. I'm thinking I might just make the initiative for the building and open these visitor spots to people. <laughs> it's legal? No, like a code thing. Uh we don't think they built it on the up and up. Technically when you lay a parking lot like that, you should have some kind of drainage. For civil reasons, you know, for like water, you know, collection yeah. or whatever. And they didn't. They seemed just to come in one day, flatten it one day, and the next day pave it. We'll make it a visitor spot. <laughs> and that's what they did? They and and they made they, they new visitor spots coming soon. Okay, so either then, somebody complained that they didn't need more visitor parking yeah. or they're hiding a body. <laughs> or I'm thinking maybe the people who live on the first floor who is now who had views of like the rock, who never had to worry about people bothering them because it was nice and quiet. Now we'll have headlights in their fucking living rooms. Because picture this right here. Kyle's will be parking facing this. Oh, shit. So before, yeah. you never had... It was total darkness back That makes there. sense. They had a little floodlight that kind of lit a little area. That was about it. But for the most part, it was it was dark as night. But now yeah. you will have cars 24 hours a day coming in there. And when they pull in... Now, it's not just your living room. It's yeah. your bedrooms. Because it's basically this side. Of, it's like me and Sue's room and like Joey's room. Yeah. Like The light will come in. I get annoyed, though, when people complain like that and then get what they want. Because like, you moved there. You should have known about this. Well, I mean... You know, you move there. I mean, I guess the best they could do is offer them another unit, right? That's probably the only other option, because you should know what you were getting yourself into. No, because the NRB contract there is a construction clause. Ah, there is. You're right. So we do sign something that says that you may have a flat tire due to nails and shit <laughs> that come off construction vehicles, and that you will see you will feel blood. Yeah, dude, that is. I, you know what? You're right. You know, we do cut. have a construction clause in our lease that I remember us signing. Yeah, we gotta, you got to cover your ass. Yeah, that's but how they do it. I will say the way that they have done the guest parking, they literally sent out an email on a Friday, said they were going to start do working on it on a Saturday. If any of those people on that first floor, say, just re-signed a lease and it was not disclosed to them that there were any plans to do anything behind where their apartment is, it, that... I would 
definitely put up a fight. Do you know what's suspicious that because they did this? Because they probably wouldn't have re-signed their Probably lease. not. Knowing that the cars are going to be in their living room. Cars right. are okay. going to be parking. And what I also know is when you do parking lots, you, you get a civil engineer who has to be there and he has to stake out like the location because you have to survey what you're doing because that survey record goes into the dean, uh, the deed of the city. So when you say they sell this property, the property will show uh, this building. It'll show a garage. It'll show a parking yeah. lot. If you don't have a civil engineer to actually document that, then it really doesn't exist on paper. So the fact that we never, A, seen a civil engineer, B, ever seen stakes, and then overnight, over a weekend, it was done. It was almost like the people who get roofs done in their houses on a Sunday, so yeah. they don't have to pull a permit. I think someone's burying a body and trying to hide it. Yeah, it could be that, too. Yeah, let's just throw it. We kill this I think guy. They, let's throw, let's I put think some they, cement over it. And, uh... So they're building all those new buildings down there, so I think they're taking advantage of having construction going on and then... You know, throwing that in. They did know. erase a lot of visitor parking over there. Yeah. When they were putting those up. That's right. They, they took a lot out. So someone's very suspicious about this over there. You know what I mean? Hmm. But I feel bad for the people who lived there who had basically opened up their window and it was it was nice and quiet. And now they have cars. You're going to have visitors parking there. You're going to have commotion. Yeah. I mean, you should hear the noise we hear on this fucking thing right here on this side. Of the, yeah. Just the people parked out there overnight. It's going to be a nightmare back there. I think people are going to start having sex. Ooh. Fuck parties. How's the lighting back there? Dude, it's so nice bright. Oh, it's bright? Oh, oh then no sex. Dude, if it's dark. Then... So they put, it was a little floodlight that was over like one of the doors that kind of lit the area a little bit. Just enough. Yeah. Now it's like fucking Fenway Park back there at night. Yeah. Every, it's like, bing, bing, no bing, sex bing. in those cars. No. No. No, it's too bright. Yeah. Yeah, dude, we're in the hood. I could never get in a car sex. I, I like legs. I have long, dangly legs, man. I, I need yeah. leg space. No, car you know? sex isn't the most comfortable. And in fact, no. it's, it's more out of, uh, um, to, uh, just to get it done. You know yeah, I mean? you got a hormonal rage going yeah, on. You have fucking, no other means. No like, other means. You're <laughs> right? a 16-year-old kid. You can't bring him back to mom's house to bang him in, the, in a bedroom that's adjacent to this. I, I had car sex once. It was the worst experience ever. Because, like I said, like, dude, I got long. I'm all yeah. leg, man. It, like, legs are hitting windows, and, like, I was just uncomfortable. <laughs> and, like, it was, it was bad. It was, I hated it. It was yeah. a lot of, I, I like to sprawl. I like a bed, man. I want to sprawl so you need out. A, you need to bang someone in the back of an Escalade and have the seats down. That could work. They, they, there was like a little cool. simulated bed. You, All right, well, you know what? If it could work, then do it. Yeah, but I... I you don't want a chick climbing over you while you're in the driver's seat and no. riding you in a fucking pocket. No, I like to enjoy my time. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't want to worry about... Well, the whole time I think you're thinking, is a cop's coming? I had a friend who was... That's true. Remember the assembly, the old assembly square mall in Somerville before yeah. they redid it? Yeah. I had a friend who was banging some broad in the parking lot at the time, and no, there used to be a state police barracks over there before they moved it across from where the Margaritas is. Yeah, and all of a sudden he got the old oh on the awkward. window with yeah, the yeah. flashlight as the girl yeah. is straddling him. Oh man! Oh yeah! Excuse right. me. And he rolled down the window. Can I see your IDs to make sure eight or eighteen? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And then I mean, what's a cop going to do? I mean, they could arrest you for indecent, but he got a. Uh, when do you take this to a place that's a little more private than a pocket lot kind of line? <laughs> and got the got the shame, you know what I mean? The guilt and the scare. Yeah. Because, you know, the last thing you want to do is if you're getting ridden, look over and see a fucking stadium. Oh, uh, what are those, those flashlights they have are bright as fuck, too. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's more intimidating than getting pulled over and then they have the spotlight in the back of the car that pretty much blinds the shit out of you. Oh, God, I'm glad this never happened. I've, been, I've, I've only had two instances of uh, just fun in a like car in a parking lot. Uh, Liberty Tree, uh, not Liberty Tree. Uh, no North Shore? One? Yeah, North Shore Mall parking yep. lot. It was like late at night with the only car there. I mean, it was like, dude, I was like 18, 19. Mm. Um, and then... Yeah, Alex Wallace is up. He's the Macaroni he Grill. <laughs> parking lot Macaroni once. Macaroni Grill. Huh? It was oh, up in like, Ruben? No, not that one. Um, there was one up in, uh, if you go past, like, Lowell, like, past, okay. way up there. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but, and there was a guy who was kind of an ass, but it was pretty funny. I, 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 now looking back, it's kind of funny. Um, me and this girl were, uh, you know, we was kind of flooring. The windows were fogged up, right? And then all of a sudden, in the back windows, this guy being a creeper, and he, like, did this, and then he ducked down was behind the window. No, it was just a person just coming out of Macaroni Girl. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I kind of look back, and I kind of give him, like, you know what? He's just, it was it only last, like, five seconds, and he left. I think having sex, like, unless you have a van, that makes it socially acceptable, because there's no windows back. Yes, there, yeah, you know? yeah. It's like having a little house. Yeah. It's like an RV. It's like those guys we watch. Are the, I think you can have sex in a vehicle until you're 21. At 21, I think you should just, you know. Get a hotel room. Buy a cheap $35 Chisholm's Hotel in Route 1. Or even go to like I don't know a fucking Red Roof Inn. Red Roof Chis <laughs> you know? Chisholm's is thirty five. Chisholm's, you, you know that one right up in Saugus or across that's, the Mitchell Golf. Called Chism What's the one next to uh, the other uh, Mitchell Golf? Yeah, it's next to the Mitchell Golf Course. Is that what's called? Yeah, where your dad grew up behind it. Yes, yes, the that's something exactly like that. That's like, house was. I mean, listen, you go, Chism you go to the guy. I just need a room. How much? Thirty five bucks. 
listen, you horned up enough, you'll fuck anywhere. Dude, I'd rather spring for ninety at a ho- at, at oh, like you, a, a hundred dollars at a holiday. Spend the extra Express. few bucks for a little bit better. Oh, you know what I mean? God. But for the most part, you're gonna dump your load and then you're gonna call it a day. Yes, but the, the penicillin, the mites crawling in my ears from the bed. Just bring a blanket. You know oh, you, God. you go, you stop at Walmart, you buy some fucking cheap seat sheets for like. I don't know, 10 bucks, Dude, right? you never... I know how you are at these hotel rooms. I slept in the bed next to you. Well, you're, you're, not like, sli- you're not sleeping there. I know. You're just going to... What you're going to do is you're going to strip the fucking thing off, right? Oh, the comforter. And then you bring your own sheets in, and you just layer it. I don't want to fucking touch that fucking bed. And then you just... You, you don't go on there. You let her go there, and you just do your business standing up and kind of... Yeah, she could be on the bottom and be the buffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between me and the sheets. Yeah, you don't want to be on that shit. No. no, no and then when you're done, you, you, you wipe your ding-dong off and one of those. Those uh, oh, yellow dude. colored face wash. Oh, dude, I, I think I'd cry. Here's the thing: I think I'd cry in the bathroom because I'd be like, I can't believe I resorted resorted to that. I, there's no other place I could have been other than a thirty five dollar hotel room. Really? I mean, I, I would hate myself for life. It, dep- what, what, it depends what you are in life, right? Right now, yeah, you probably could do a little bit better. <laughs> Adam, cried. maybe uh, fifteen years ago. Oh, like, that's true. All right, you're Adam. all horned up. You just want to, you just want to blow your load. All right, twenty twenty. All and right, she's fine. ready to go. She's all, all right. she's all worked up, and you know, she's yeah. rubbed up. Hey, there's a motel. Okay, so, all right. So, what's your problem? What's going on all this? You look very distressed. No, I'm fine. Oh. I'm just going to oh, good. We're gonna lose her. She's gonna pass out. There. We're no. boring her today. Hey, she's held out this long. She's uh... not like double back. Double back was gonna make it out tonight, but he was. Uh, He's a, little, he's a little sleepy. He scared the fuck out of me at the ATM today at Target. I thought I was getting robbed. I'm sitting there depositing my uh, tip money, and all of a sudden I get a, the, the, the show, show the shake. I looked twice. I was like, I thought I was about to get ripped off. Oh, I would never do that. I was a little that, nervous. I'm, I'm, yeah, you never touch people like and that. He goes, oh, really I seen react. you pull in. I'm like, what, are you walking, watching me in security cameras? Yeah. <laughs> you know. <sighs> all right, so I, I watched the last potato. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave watch that. That was the, uh, you did the potato on, uh, I can't remember what the fucking subject line was. It was, um... Was it Bumblebee or what? Yeah, it? the Amazon. Bumblebee Transformer. Yeah, 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 I needed to get that one out. That was been sitting in my queue. Transformer was good. Bumblebee. The, yeah, the and uh, I seen the Avatar. Avatar two. I do agree, it is a risk. Yeah. They, but Disney didn't invest uh, millions did. of dollars <laughs> into a, a separate part of a park that's revolved around. Yes. So I think that's what their marketing plan was. Because Avatar was a good movie. Well, at the time though, they they weren't. Avatar was not part of Disney. Like, it was 20th Century Fox, but now. Since since now Disney bought 20th Century yeah. Fox, now it is part of it. But I think you know? that the movie was a success. They built a park, and they're using the success of the park because yeah, it's the gonna, most popular park have to. to make the movie worthwhile. So even the movie sucks, people will still go yeah. see it because they are obsessed with the park. I hope so. So they're using the they're using the product of the park as like the marketing for the movie. No, usually it's the other way around. Usually the movie. Yes. Mocking the park. They're yeah. going to use the park to mock the movie. Because all these huge Disney, like the, the goofballs we watch on YouTube, are all going to go see Avatar 2. Yeah. And they're all going to love it because, oh my God. I went to the park. It was yeah, awesome. And what, yeah. Disney will throw another ride in that park. And yeah. Wait, people will wait five hours like me and Sue did not because we had other things to do. You know, we're not that crazy Disney. No, right, Sue? Five hours. Right. Might just spend a happy day at waiting no. in line. No. I no. mean, if there was a bathroom every, you know, so far, and I could drink heavily. I, or have sex in that line? Sure. I mean, <laughs> if, it's gonna if, be anyone, if ever watched this show or listened to the show and has had sex in Disney, please let us know. Because They're pretty cool. there's a few places that I staked out that you could easily have sex you in Disney. Yeah. I don't know what the security camera situation is in these parks. Yeah. And if these places were modern or not. But, like, it's definitely in Epcot. Yeah. There's some coves. Like in the Morocco uh, pavilion late at night, these these little museum, little, like in Coves, Japan too, like that. These, these little areas, if you go at night in the back, there's not a lot of people there. You could totally, you know, at least give a handy. That, uh, that Star Wars land by too is going to serve alcohol. Ooh. Well, all of, I was going to serve it. I mean, uh, yeah, it's going to booze. You can drink booze in uh, MGM. No, but in Disney, they don't serve it. Just the Magic Kingdom doesn't serve it. Okay. The rest of the parks do. Oh, nice. I mean, because you can get Hammond and Epcot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hollywood Studios sells booze. Yeah. Because um, I got a few. Trust me, I got to look it up. They, I guess they're anticipating the the wait times to be so bad for when the when the Star Wars thing is open. They're going to have bathroom passes. You can leave lines to go to the bathroom. My, my kid will be 11 years old by the time I get <laughs> to go to Star Wars it. land. Because by that time, the the hype there'll be another park open. <laughs> See, the problem with Disney is they build all these hotels and resorts so they kind of nominate more people to stay the night. They don't. They need really need another park. 
they need a fifth puck too. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. It has to be because the, the idea is you have so many people concentrated. Like if you say you have, you have say you have a million rooms, right? But your puck capacity is a half a million, right? How are you going to accommodate a million people? You know what I mean? Like Disney, it was it Christmas? They turn people at the door yeah. because they hit capacity. I think the pockets only hold half a million people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you have a million people trying to get in there. You, I mean, you have a population of like a, a major city yeah. in this area. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I think it's inevitable another Disney park is going to have to happen. Build it. And you know what? Hot take. And this would be the perfect dickhead move, but it makes sense. Marvel? No. Cape Cod Disney. But there's only one way in and one way out of the Cape, so it'll be a nightmare. Uh, but at the same time, it's secluded. Well, so, I, well, I, no, well, but I'm thinking a new park in the Disney area. Oh, I'm thinking color. like a whole new, like, you know how you have Disney California? So they tried Disney, that. Do you know there's like, supposed to be one Tokyo. There's supposed to be Disney America? Yeah. In the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, they were going to build a, huge, a Disney park in, in Virginia, near Washington, D.C. It was going to call it Disney's America. Hmm. And they rejected it because people of Virginia said, no fucking way. What year was this, though? Late 80s, early 90s. Okay. And so what they did was they turned around, they built uh, MGM Studios, yeah. and then uh, Animal Kingdom, and then they did the uh, Hollywood, the uh, California Adventure out in L.A. Yeah. But the Disney area, the fucking, you, you put anything more than a movie theater on fucking Cape Cod, yeah. you're going to have some issues with people getting out. It's, 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 I know, they're not, it's not going to happen. Well, there's, there's cold ways, weather. There's, there's cold ways weather in, here. two ways out. Yeah. I mean, you could, like, you could take the Bourne Bridge. No, you know what though? They're gonna have to make another actual parks at some point. It's gonna have to have maybe maybe somewhere in middle like Texas, like you have California, middle yeah. and then Texas, and then Florida. See, I don't think, I don't think Disney's is expanding. I think they're gonna just build up the parks that are there. So make Florida. Big. I mean, they own the entire city of Bonavista. Oh, I know, I know. And kiss them. So they basically they could they have there's there's so much land. There the square footage that they own is the size of New York City. That's true. So you literally could just they could and and they have their own city. Yeah. So they have their own government. So they have their own building department. So when you want to build something, you go yeah. through yourself. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Per- they in Disney set that up perfectly, so we didn't have to go to like a city commission to get permits. They could just pull their own permits and call but, it. While I agree with you, I never underestimate greed and expansion and building another park somewhere I mean, else. I think in our lifetime, not any, not today, not tomorrow, not a year from now, not a decade from now, but I think at some point in time, there is going to be a third park so, in America somewhere. A Disney. Disneyland. Yeah, successful. Dis- yeah, Disney World. Disney World, the most successful. Tokyo Disney, and that was built in the mid-80s. That yeah. was successful. Pa- Disney, Euro Disney, failure. Yeah. Um, but then they, they did Hong Kong Disney. Yeah. Hong Kong Disney. Uh, then they built Shanghai Disney and killed Hong Kong Disney. Yeah. And now Shanghai Disney is pretty successful. So, I mean... But they did try those things, whether well, they were failures And do you know not, how they, they do it in Japan and Asia? They, they're franchises. Ah, so Disney McDonald's. runs the concept of it, if you will, but there's independent finances that will put the money in for it. So like Euro Disney, yeah. Disney controls. Okay. The, the Asian Disney's are run by another company as a franchisee that has to follow the criteria of Disney. Oh, okay. So it's Disney, like McDonald's. I'm trying basically, to make yeah. it smaller, like yeah. McDonald's, then so leasing not, out to other companies. Exactly. Yeah, right. So Disney's not 100 percent responsible for these pox. I gotcha. But they're responsible for people to keep up with like their standards. I see. So at any point in time, Disney would be like, "You need to bring this up a little bit, otherwise we're revoking your." You know, it's like buying a Dunkin' Donuts franchise, exactly. like to make it smaller. Like exactly. I'm going to buy into the franchise, but you have to be our standards. Yeah, you, you got to pay fall. them. Yeah. It's like when McDonald's. You ever see the movie The Founder? Oh, I want to watch it. It's on Netflix. Very I really good. I watch that. Really I would good. suggest you watch it. If, uh, yeah. Michael Keaton. Yes. It basically goes to these two brothers that started McDonald's, and they try to franchise out, but they had no control. Yeah, I saw the preview. I want to, I want to watch this. Yeah. So Michael Keaton comes in, and he's a salesman. He's like, well, how, I can get these things going. So he was ma- so basically, he, was, he wasn't buying any restaurants. He was finding people to, to franchise these things. And what happened was there was no control because, you know, figure it's the 50s. You, how are you going to get to all these locations? They weren't selling just the menu. They were selling their own stuff. The concepts weren't. Every McDonald's was different. But that was, the idea was to have a cookie cutter idea. Everything had to be the same. So he started finding these people who didn't do anything. Long term shot, Michael Keaton wasn't making any money off this because he was only getting a small percentage of each franchise. What, how McDonald's makes all their money is they buy the real the estate. The land, yep. So they own the building. So you're paying rent as a franchisee to McDonald's plus the franchise fees. Mm. So at the end of the day, if McDonald's decides they don't want to sell food anymore, they own billions of dollars worth of property they can turn around and sell. That's you know cool. what I mean? Yeah. So 
It's it, it, I think we talked about this a couple of shows ago. But yeah, we, we said and like our malls are unique because the malls have leases and stuff like this. Yeah. But for the most part, if you see a freestanding McDonald's somewhere, McDonald's the corporation owns, the owns that, and you know Adam Mallet Inc. franchisee, <laughs> you know you're the franchisee for that place. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's a good movie. You should watch it. It's, it's a little yeah, bit I, long, but it's, it's uh, very educational. Yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. Actually, it's on my list. On your list of things to see. Yes. All right, so that does it for the show. I think. Nice. What's going so, on uh, with that fucking monitor over there? I don't know why the monitor is switched. I don't know either. Ghosts. We talked about ghosts. We invoked them. Because this usually is the monitor not facing us. This is usually the one closest to the bedroom door. So I could see the Facebook. Ooh. But for some reason, I don't know why, the two switched, which is very interesting. Ghosts messing so. with us. Well, I, w- I would like to give a shout out. Tomorrow, is, uh, tomorrow will be Margot's birthday. Oh really? So, well, uh, you know, <laughs> gone, never forgotten, Margo. And it's gonna uh, be May second. Yeah, May second. That was our skip day too. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Was that? Our, yeah, it was. It was, it was that day. Yeah. We're, I, actually, I was. I'm not working at the company anymore. We we did skip. We did. Yes. yes. Our next scheduled skip day is to be it's determined. It's gonna happen. Yeah, we'll. Let's, we will let's let let you look at the White Sox game. Just watch. Uh, just. <laughs> To see a picture of Adam, I mean uh, Eric, saying he's with two people he's not allowed to talk about. Yeah, like, well, last it kind of defeats the purpose when you do yeah. that, right? Like when we, uh, me and him skipped for uh, another game that happened in the last few weeks. Oh, like, you uh, and Eric yeah. went? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Yeah. Right, Marathon know. Monday. That's right. I mean, it's over. It's been a month at this point, almost. But uh, I love the one o'clock sock skip days. It's a fun time. Yes, yeah, so it has to be done at least once this year. It's a day of drinking and cheap uh, tickets. Cheap tickets. I mean, I mean, I got six dollar Patriot Day tickets. You did. I can. We could probably get dollar fucking tickets for if they're a, still doing shitty. I mean, I, I think if they're doing five hundred, we could still find some. Yeah, cheap oh yeah, five hundred. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think. Uh, what did we get last year for that game? I mean, like 20, remember, it was like, it was like sixteen. There were sixteen dollars a piece, yeah. and they won the World Series last year. I did. So, I mean, we didn't right, go see true. a World Series team on that field. So I'm on a yeah. budget, man. I have new payments. <laughs> yeah, you got ex- ex- new expense. Yeah, I'm sure your insurance went up as well. Yeah, it went up. Uh, not, not too much uh, from like 115 to 150. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah. Fucking insurance is a killer. It is. You would think with a car that's uh, that's like more new, it would go down because you're safer, so less likely for something you to happen. Think, yeah. That, so why? But they look at it as the value of them having to cover it if there's a total is more, I guess. That's true. So, I mean, it's one of the other. I mean, the amount of... I, I guess the amount of money I've used in insurance and paid in insurance will never, ever, ever equal out. No. You'll no. always pay for more insurance. Yep. I mean, just picture someone who has a house for 50 years just paying house insurance, and the house never burns down. You know what I mean? They just. Yeah. But it's that one time that the house burns down that you need the money for. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. ugh, you, yeah. you're doomed if you do, you're doomed if you don't. Yep. But, I mean, it is what it is. It is. All right, so check out the potato, yeah, the whirlwind variety. The whirlwind potato. It's Slowly, if you go deep into the archives, you can see the inside of the uh, the mallet ranch. The leprechaun video. Yes, you can see inside of his house yeah. where the we're, magic we're, happens. We're growing, nice little growing, like we're like an infant child whose eyes just opened. Yes, growing slowly, nicely, living vicariously. I remember when I first got your address, I was Google Earth on it to see what it looks like. I was curious. It looked like an ass when you Google it. Now it still looks like just a house. Now this is siding's better. I used to rent the car siding. and sit in front of it and just watch you through binoculars. Well, I know you like to stare at me, so you probably just... Hey, I don't know hey, what you're doing in that bathroom. I, I do. I, I'm, I like coming here better, obviously, but I kind of do miss those days around the table a little bit in, in Cambridge, a little bit. Yeah, we had a night. That was a night. It was pretty much a, it was a dedicated night because you get there after work once we fought through the Boston traffic. Yeah. And then we had to, uh, we did the show, yeah. and then we, we would end up in drinks. a bar afterwards, yeah. and then before you know it, it could be 11, sometimes 12. We had guests, and it, 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 sometimes they'd come along. <sighs> Fucking and sometimes. I know. mean, that wasn't so bad when I was I was going into work at like 9 or 8. Exactly. When the t- yeah. You know, now it's like, yeah. if I had to do that now, maybe when I get a regular 9. But then we had to pay all that money to do what pretty are, much what we're doing now. What Crespo's doing now? He's in Salt Lake City. Oh. He's doing the uh, radio. He's this. running a online station out in Salt Lake City because I uh, reached. He reached out to me about a month and a half ago, asking if I knew anyone who could do something with bands or something in the area. And I go, no. And I go, how you doing? I go, how's uh, what are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm in Salt Lake City. I'm running uh, running a station out there. Yada yada yada. Someone else, I guess, one of the producers that was one of our producers, is now running the station over in Cambridge and all that stuff. And he huh. wanted to know. He was, uh, we were talking about, he was asking me what I use for the stream and gave me some suggestions for some stuff. We I'm trying to think of what it forth. would take for me to go to Salt Lake. I think it's a girl. What, what else reason? Why would There's you want to go out there? there? Exactly. It's a real, 
why would you take, of a town? They know? paid him really well. Or he's not a, a big drinker, or, and he's not. I don't, so I don't think he's a pottier. So I think he's kind of like it's gotta be a girl, or the money was good. One or the other. Hell, maybe you just want to sign it, change the scenery and stuff. You, but that I guess if like... you didn't, if you didn't drink much, because I don't think that guy drunk drank much. I don't know. I, I never really seen him and talk. We never, but I guess if you're not a big drinker, Salt Lake City is kind of just whatever. Because I think yes. the alcohol aspect of the city would just you know make me not want to go there. Yeah, I think. I mean, because the beer is a less percentage in alcohol. The nightlife's not too crazy. Yeah. But I guess you'd be like the scene. I mean, it's a beautiful city. And it's on the side of a mountain. And there's a giant lake yeah, there. I mean, it's, it's nice cool to look visit, at. But eventually over time, I think I'd lose my shit. We're like, talking about the time I went to a strip club there. And it was like a plastic plexiglass uh, wall around the dance floor. Oh, man. The girl was dancing in a bikini. That sounds like a fun visit. Like I want to go to Zion. I'm planning on going to Zion at some point in Utah. And I really want to see that. But I living there. Yeah, no, I don't tough. think so, man. Breaking news. We're having a show. Ch- we don't talk about Chocella. Chocella. What's that big music festival they have in L.A.? Coachella? Yeah. Do you, you don't want to tell me about that? No. It was a record break of uh, herpes outbreaks. No, I didn't tell you about that. No. Oh, who the hell told me that? Someone, maybe it was, uh, was, it was me. Joe or something? Oh, 1,200 cases <laughs> connected to that. <laughs> so that means there was someone with like some bad herpes in their mouth just blowing people. Oh, God. I mean, that's a lot. And they, they all... Everyone, twelve hundred cases went to a the CCC, the, C, uh, the Center of Con- Disease, CDC, Center of Disease, CDC, Control, CDC, had reported that twelve hundred cases of people who said they were at Cho- Chotella, whatever the fuck it's called, Coachella. Yeah, that's where the rich snobs go. Well, doesn't mean they don't have herpes. I'm glad that they got herpes. Sometimes the richer girls have herpes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Hey, yeah, brother. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Yes. Same bad time. Same bad channel. See you later. Woo! Thank <laughs> you.